talk to Dave Hancock, who is a programmer for us. And the first question I usually ask is, what's your history? So I'm going to be repetitive and ask you too. So I graduated in 09 and I started uh, doing games in pretty much right out of school. Uh, I went to school for games. But I um, uh, started playing with some studios. We did mobile games for about two years there. And then I came to City City Entertainment. I love that name, Flying Wisdom Studios. It was actually, what does Wisdom um, look like? It was the name of his, uh, one of the owners, it was the name of his kid, actually. His name was Flying Wisdom? <laughs> uh, so he was a, um, a, uh, a Chinese national, so he had, it was a, in, in Chinese, the name uh, it, it, was the, it was the American translation. Okay, okay, like David would be courageous or whatever that yeah, means. It's, it's not literally Flying Wisdom. Exactly, it, it was just like, it was the American translation out of, of that, so. Okay. So what are the differences between here and working for a mobile games company? Um, as far as team size or whatever well, dynamic? The main difference is like, you know, it's, we have a, a much more tight studio and we're all in one room. We're not, we don't have any remote workers and, you know, we, we do a lot more discussion and we talk a lot more and nobody really, it, we have a much better, more open studio and it's a lot tighter than most places. So it's, we get to know each other, you know, we have fun with each other and. We play Nerf. We have Nerf guns. I mean, <laughs> and uh, when, the when apex someone, of our teamwork. <laughs> well, I mean, we have that. Like we have, you know, when Mark says something, we can all just discuss it. Or whenever someone has an idea, we discuss it, and it's a nice open floor like that. So it's oh. it's great to be in a small studio that has that kind of environment. You said you went to school uh, for game development. What what inspired you to choose that? Um, I started programming as in middle school, and uh, it's kind of stuck, like I really like gaming, I mean I enjoyed gaming when I was playing, I like playing games, and it sort of evolved into, well I like to do that for a living, and so that's kind of what happened, I just took that to the extent, and here I am today, you know. I've asked you before, and I'll keep asking, how do you trip into programming? Oh, I'm in middle school, I feel like programming today. Um, it was actually a game, it was a mod, it was, uh, there was a social online game that had the ability to mod the, uh, the, uh, you can make your own little like, areas and worlds and share with other people, so I ended up uh, getting into programming because of that. And, sort of know. second life kind of thing. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to talk about it. It was middle school. Oh, uh, it, uh, <laughs> it was a dark time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you working on now? Um, so I'm focusing a lot on Patrick stuff, as also uh, came in client side work, so. Uh, but for less, you like uh, in game stuff, you know, it's. Working on some of like the placeables and putting stuff in the world and getting the movements around, and letting the artist you know actually place objects in the world—that's kind of fun and cool. And you'll actually add some nice visual feedback. Whole other getting actual make the world start feeling like an actual world, which is kind of cool. And you're, we'll be able to see probably show more of that off soon. Mm -hmm. And then uh, any rendering tests again, I always jump on top of those. But you know, are you getting any feedback from our internal testers? Uh, yeah, we get some good feedback. Um, whenever we do our internal tests, you know, we have the, the discussions and the uh, we have the, uh, the chat room, and so we get a lot of like feedback, and we, we help with people, and we do support through there, and we get feedback and run that, and then fix it, and then bring it back, and we can rapidly iterate because we're a small team, so we, we can easily take something we get advice from, and then put it into the game pretty quickly, and you know show new features, and keep on, and we can keep improving on what we have, and take people's feedback to, and quickly use it, which is something you don't get at a bigger studio, probably, you know, you wouldn't get that. Rapid. Okay, they told us in chat. Now an hour later, we've got yes. <laughs> something in game that fixes that. You know. Yes. When you say you're working on rendering, what does that mean exactly? Um, so about two months ago, I did the deferred render for it, and we're actually moving off of that. We're going to be moving to my forward plus system, which I'm not actually sure we can talk about. I don't think about it. You can put it in, and then it'll be edited yes, if we're not allowed. Well, about two months ago, we started on we had implemented deferred render, which was one of my tasks, and then. Okay, wait. Not programmer. Deferred render. It is a form of rendering where we render all of the objects into a, or we render all of our objects in depth and color and anything we use as a material property and lighting for whatever purpose. We render them into a, something called a G buffer, which is basically a collection of textures or uh, they're a collection of textures. Which a texture is just a sheet, a two D. Uh, it can be three D, but we use two D. Um, Square that has information in it that you can use, and each pixel has you know four bytes of well, can't have up to four bytes of information, um, and we use that. And then you take that information and you do a second pass where you actually do the lighting based on that, which is done. 
basically we go through and we take all the lights we want on the scene and we do it per pixel rather than doing every object in the scene has to render each light, which it causes, it saves us, it allows you to do a lot more lighting, like a lot more, have a lot more dynamic lights in a scene without having to really, uh, it, it, without the performance cost of it. Because like normally if you had a lot of lights in a scene, doing it with a straightforward rendering pass would be very expensive. You wouldn't be able to do thousands of lights. Mm -hmm. But that's something Andrew sort of specializes in, is yes. condensing that. I, I know he's yeah. worked on lighting in the past. Yeah, that's one of Andrew's specialties, and he's probably going to be doing quite a bit of work on that, too. So. Very good. Uh, what sort of games do you play, like, in your downtime? Uh, quite a bit. Uh, quite a few games. Uh, so I play a lot of board games, as referenced by the fact that we've pretty much had board games all the last couple weeks. <laughs> I'm indicated. But I'm getting the feeling game Cthulhu games. on your shirt that says, Obey Cthulhu. <laughs> Beginning to get that impression. Uh, but for actual games, like I've played a lot of uh, simulators, flight simulators, and like space simulators, stuff like that. So I've been doing a lot of those recently, and uh, also a lot of MMOs. A lot of I'm looking forward to you know trying out some new ones coming out here recent, soon and finding a place to play some games from there. Um, so you're well experienced with patchers. <laughs> <laughs> I've used many of them. Yes. <laughs> what are your hobbies that you do in your free time other than playing all the games? <laughs> So I like reading books, you know, it's one of my big hobbies, but um, I used to do some rock climbing, I'd like to get back into that. And I, I, I dabbled in uh, beer making for a while, I haven't done it recently because I just have to, uh, it, it takes a while to set up and have to have a lot of space for it, you know, it's moving to my new place so I might be able to do it now because i got space again for it, so. Actually, uh, about two years ago I bought a hurdy-gurdy, which is a uh, medieval instrument, well, it's more of a renaissance instrument that was really popular, but in, in that time period, but it fell off really quickly as other instruments came up to more popular in popularity. And the French actually kind of preserved it for quite a while. And then, is it musical? What is what is this? It's a it's a musical instrument. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's, uh, a, it's, it's a wheel fiddle. So, oh. hurdy gurdy is just a, a name that's used for it. Sometimes it's also viola ro, which is a French name for it. And it's just it's a violin meets a bagpipe in the uh, <laughs> simplest terms. Okay, do you use a bow? Is it still a No, it's, it's a crank. So you have a, uh, a knob here, uh, it's, a, it's a crank wheel, and then you have a red so row of keys here like you want on a piano. Mm. Yeah, you, you have two strings <laughs> that are your primary, um, your actual ones that the keys mod modulate, which can actually be one string. It depends on the model, you can have to do more than that. And then you have your chanters, which are the uh, drone strings that are run along. You have normally two low ones and two that are on key. And one's a called the chin, which is the dog, which bar uh, it causes a uh, buzzing noise for rhythm, mm. which is controlled by a subtle wrist flick on the, on the wrist. I'm well known for my, uh, my laughter at bagpipes because I feel like I can only detect two songs ever. So can you play a variety of things on this hurdy gurdy? What do you play? You can play a variety of things. Most of the people, like, you have two different schools generally have thought here where there's people who really only play traditional like uh, renaissance medieval style dance music mm. which is very proper and stuff and then you have more uh <laughs> metal head gurdy <laughs> well you're, they uh they're like they're more like nouveau uh, artists where they, they do like um one guy uh alexis vacher he does um interesting things with like he actually does a more a trance music a dance music style thing with it where it's like he, he mixes his, uh, using uh, electric hurdy, he actually plugs it into an amp, and, you know, he, he records pieces, and then he can, like, mix it together on stage, and does, he does interesting things with it, and it sounds good, you know, it's... Oh. So. Okay, back to the game, although that is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you excited to be working on in the future? I mean, you know, I'm excited to get gameplay in there, I'm excited to, you know, get the game looking good, and get it running great, and, you know, get people honestly playing the game, and getting, you know, running around and having fun, so... Well, thank you, Dave. It's always uh, good talking with you, and I'm excited to hear some more stuff. Sounds great.